And on a prior video, I reviewed the Kiyu AKY B360 ST 360 degree mirror dash cam. This dash cam is pretty interesting because it allows us to record not only the entire entirety of the interior of our vehicle, but also has a side camera. So if you have not seen that video, you may want to watch that first as this video is going to focus on the menu and you may not understand some of the menu items if you have not seen the original video. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below so you can check it out. However, if you have already made a decision that this is a dash cam for you or if you have ordered one and are getting ready to receive it you might want to become familiar with the menu and on this video I'm gonna show you all the menu settings and which ones I personally use so you can decide how to correctly set up your Akiyo dash cam for the best possible use and as always I like to remind you that I have placed a link in the description down below to this dash cam if you want to look at this further or acquire one for yourself and we'll begin this tour of the Akiyo AKY B360 ST with the view as you can see I have the rear camera connected then I also have the side camera connected and then we have the 360 degree camera now right now the camera is facing towards the front why is that well if I tap on the screen and if I use the last icon I have a potential six views the very first view is called panoramic so the camera is facing the front and it's gonna try to capture everything as much as it can from the front of the vehicle the second view is the 360 view as you can see, we still have the rear, we still have the side, but now the camera is gonna be moved. I'm gonna rotate that into the 360 mode. So now it's facing down. And if you take a look at the side, when I move my finger, I can move or pan the camera around. And obviously if this was inside of a vehicle, you could see the interior of the vehicle. Now you can see that that notification to move the camera will remind you. So panoramic mode, again, reminds me, face the camera towards the front for the best possible view of the front. 360 view, put the camera down for the best possible 360 view of the inside of the vehicle. Now let's look at view number three. View number three is what they call blind spot. So we have the rear of the vehicle and then we have the left view and then we have the right view. Now both of these views can be adjusted. As you can see, it can turn. And sure enough, I can select either the left and independently, I can select the right. So this is a very convenient view if you're trying to see the left and the right, but also the rear of the vehicle. The next potential view is this view right here, which is pretty nuts. We have the rear camera and we have the side camera on this side, but then we also have four individual tiny views and all of them can be adjusted individually. Not sure what you want to drive with this view, but if you wanted to display all four views, you can potentially can, <laughs> in addition to the two other views that you have right here. And then you have a view number five. View number five is probably one of my favorites because it shows the rear and it shows the side split 50-50. This is very, very convenient. However, my favorite, favorite view is number six. And number six has the rear a little bit larger. Notice that now instead of taking 50% of the screen, it took about three quarters of the screen. And in that small little corner, we have the side camera. But another thing I wanna show you regarding views is that some of them can be expanded. If I'm only interested in the rear, I can tap that and now I am in the rear of the vehicle and I can also adjust the camera view angle. Now, if I tap that one more time, I exit that view. But what if I wanna see the side camera? We can blow that up too as well. Double tap to exit out of there. Now, some of them can be expanded, not all of them. As you can see, if I tap on this one right here, which is the panoramic view, it won't do it. And now we're gonna go all the way to the left and this little icon right here, allows us to stop the recording. You can see that there's no more blinking dot or start a recording. The blinking dot has resumed. The next icon is a picture icon. This allows me to take a picture of whatever the dash cam is currently capturing. And the next one is this lock icon. Now this is gonna flag that video. Whatever it was being recorded at the time is being flagged because we are telling the dash cam something important just happened. Save that video in a special place so I can find it easy later. Because remember, there's a lot of videos that are being saved on here. By flagging them, we can find them a lot easier. So how do we actually see those recordings? Well, I'm gonna stop the recording and once I stop the recording, Recording, you can see that we have a new icon and if I press that little icon we have all the recordings that the camera has ever recorded and they're organized in folders we have the front view 
we have the rear view, we have the front and the rear, and then we have a folder that just has pictures, if there's any pictures that have been taken. But also let me show you what happens when we play back a file. The file retains the ability for us to move the camera around or change between the different views, such as the four view angle mode, the 360 degree angle mode, or the panoramic mode right here. Now, obviously, depending on what we're trying to see, we want to select the correct angle. <laughs> well, that is so cool that we can play back videos in that manner. But now we'll move over to the settings and I'm gonna switch to my stylus so you can get a better view without my finger blocking the view. And you can see that every time I wanna enter the settings, it won't let me unless I stop the recording. Once I stop the recording, I can press the gear icon and enter the settings menu. The settings menu has been divided into two pages. This is the first page. And if I tap on here, this is the second page. I can also change between the pages just by scrolling down. That's kind of convenient. First, we can change the screen brightness to the lowest. Now, some people choose to lower the brightness at night or have it somewhere in the middle, but I particularly always leave it on a high. That It doesn't really seem to bother me and it seems to work best, so I'm not adjusting back and forth between brightness settings. Now, the G sensor. This, I always run this on low. However, I recommend you experiment with your vehicle and what this does is how sensitive the camera is to detecting a car crash. When this dash cam detects a car crash, crash is automatically going to flag the video. Remember, it's the equivalent of me pressing this button, but the dash cam is doing it automatically, which means that if the dash cam has been set too high in terms of sensitivity, anytime I close a door or a car with a loud exhaust passes by, the camera is going to think that I got into a car crash. Now, if I don't want the dash cam to sense what I got into a car crash, I can turn that setting off. Now, the next one is going to be frequency. If you are in Europe, we want to select 50 Hertz, or if you're in the United States, we're going to select 60 Hertz. And what this does, this is going to decrease any kind of flickering of any lights that we might potentially record. Then we have video voice. Do we want to record the audio or not? Now, I recommend always leaving the setting on, recording the audio, and if we don't need it, we can always dump it later. And the next option is rear mirror. What does that do? Well, let's go back to the front and let's take a look at the rear camera. On the rear camera, as you can see, the window currently is on this side. However, oops, gotta stop the recording first. <laughs> if I turn that setting off and go back to the front, notice that the window has moved from this side to this side. And we can also do it for the side camera. I'm gonna go back to the front and notice where the Akiyo logo is on this side. If I flip that image, we should see that move to the opposite side. And sure enough, it was here and now it jumped here. Again, this is only gonna be needed if we're trying to correct for some unusual camera placement. By default, most of the time, having both of them on on normally provides the correct view. And the next setting is the screensaver option. I always have this setting off because I wanna keep the screen on all the time and use this as a digital mirror. However, we know that this surface is reflective, so if we did not wanna use the screen, we can use it as a regular mirror and the dash cam is still recording in what I call stealth mode. That is one way to do it with the button down here. However, if we wanted the dash cam to do that automatically, that's where the screensaver comes on. We can tell the dash cam, hey, after two minutes, turn off the screen, but continue recording. Or after one minute, turn off the screen, but continue recording. But now let's move over to the second page. And the very first option is changing the language setting of the dash cam. Then this next option is sound. Now this is a sound that is emitted by the dash cam. So you can see the beeping got a lot quieter and it got really high. So I normally leave that mine on medium. That seems like a nice in between. Now the HOED mode or HUD mode, that is what controls what information is displayed on the screen. As you can see right now, we have the time, the date and the speed and the direction. However, we can adjust those. If for some reason we wanted to have a very clean screen, we can turn all of them off. Okay, there we go. Or we can select only clock or we can select only speed, or my preferred one, speed, the direction, and the clock. And that is because I think it's kind of a small, it doesn't really get in my way, and the speed, it's a nice reminder of how fast I'm going, and I always like to have a compass. I think that's convenient to have. But now let's continue to the next setting, and that is gonna be the speed unit. 
If we are in a place that uses kilometers, we can change that to kilometers. If we are in a place that uses mile per hour, we can select miles per hour. And we're now down to the last setting, which is the system settings. And there are three buttons right here. The very first one allows me to format the memory card. Now this is convenient if it's the first time we put in a brand new memory card on here, we want to format that before begin using it. It is also convenient if for some reason we want to blank out any record or any evidence in one touch. We can select to do that. Then we also have the factory reset option and this just restores all the settings to factory settings in case for some reason we customize it and we don't know how to go back to how it originally was when we got it, we can do that right there. Then we can also change the time and the day manually. Well, here's one final Easter egg that I found. If I stop recording and then I double tap the GPS icon, this is going to bring up the number of satellites that the GPS antenna has acquired, including information such as location, which is convenient to confirm if the GPS antenna has a good signal or not. And that completes an overview of the menu and all the settings for the Kiyu AKY B360 ST mirror dash cam. If you guys have any other questions regarding the dash cam, the menu, or the settings, please put that in the comments down below. And make sure you check out my other dash cam reviews under the playlist dash cams, including the Kiyu AKY B720S mirror dash cam. If you found any part of this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.